Let's talk started out with a bang this week uh, with some news, uh, geopolitical news, obviously dominating the headlines, uh, which ended up uh, turning out to be uh, not as much of a factor for equities, uh, for risk appetite in general. Uh, so the market uh, digested that, that thought uh, before finishing up here Friday with a little bit of weakness. So uh, kind of an interesting end to the week. Uh, maybe in anticipation of, of whatever might come out over the weekend, um, or maybe in anticipation of uh, the fact that you know we might be nearing the beginnings of this intermediate run. So I'm going to break that down in today's video, like what to watch for and what signs to see and what that intermediate run would look like, that pullback will look like. I'm going to break that down, uh, as well as our trade idea of a stock that might be bucking the trend, um, that has not been participating, that might buck the trend of the pullback, and might get going on its own. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Friday, January the 10th, 2020. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, let's start off by taking a look at the S&P 500 with the Market Forecast Indicator. Um, and you can see this little decline that we had uh, on uh, at the end of the day. I brought that momentum line down and it brought it all the way down to, but not to an extreme low. So the extremes where you're worrying about the trend change, the sign of weakness uh, would be below that fifth percentile. So at least we are still up above that fifth percentile. Um, the near term line still on its run, it's pulled down a little, but still above the 50, it's still on a normal rally, near term run. And of course the intermediate posture still strongly bullish. The uh, market sentiment line, long term market sentiment line also uh, still strongly bullish. So, so the, the trend is still there. Um, did a little bit of weakness uh, coming, a little bit of an engulfing pattern as well uh, up there at the top. I've got a bunch of lines drawn here because of uh, our technical analysis. On the technical analysis class yesterday, uh, I went over um, I went over what the pullback, what my expectations of any pullback would be look like, and 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 when it would occur, um, and we use the Fibonacci time series and, and in the conjunction with Fibonacci retracements that you see here, as well as the Fibonacci fans. Uh, so you know, if you haven't checked out that class for those that are premium, for our plus subscribers and our premium subscribers, uh, our monthly plus subscribers, uh, you, I would check out that class at, um, in terms of like whether this is the beginning, because if you look at the seasonality of this chart here, you'll notice <coughs> that, and here let me go to prices percentage, and let me go back 20 years, so to get as much data as possible. If you look, this is a time of year where we don't do too hot, going into February 10th, February the 11th. This is a time where if we're gonna get an intermediate pullback, you know, the patterns are there from a seasonality standpoint to have some a period of weakness right now going into February expiration. So don't be surprised. We've had our first little week of, of January and now we tend to, uh, to consolidate gains because we typically get good gains going into the end of the year and look at those good gains <laughs> on the S&P 500. So we typically get really good gains going into the end of the year. So January tends to be a period where we consolidate some of those gains. And if you look at uh, the zigzag here, I mean, look, we've gone up nine, what is that, 9% and then a 2% pullback and then another 6% gain that we're currently on and we still haven't had a 1% pullback. So you know, I'm 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 looking for a pullback down at best case scenario down to the 23%. Um, but I don't think that that would be an intermediate pull. I don't think that will bring the intermediate line down below 50. I think we'll get um, the the kind of you know there there's two different bullish pattern. There's two different patterns you can get on on the market forecast on a pullback. One of them is light pink shading and a yellow line, where when you're on a good strong run intermediate run and you get light pink shading and yellow lines, you bounce back up. You get light pink shading and a yellow line, you bounce back up. You get light pink shading. Even if you don't get the yellow line, you bounce back up. You bounce back up, you bounce back up. You see lots of examples. Light pink shading here, yellow line, you bounce up. Light pink shading, you bounce up. And then, then you notice every time we get dark pink shading and a red line, which is your intermediate pullbacks, it always starts off as light pink shading and yellow line. So. So every, I mean, when you get, when you get, and I think a 23% retracement will get us to the light pink shading, you know, right here to this level, we'll get, obviously you'll get the yellow line because you'll be below the moving average, um, which is because it's above that line now. And you'll probably get the intermediate line dropping below 80, which gives us a light pink shading. I don't think that will drop to the 23 will get us the dark pink shading. 
which is what happens when the intermediate line below is 50. And that, when it crosses below 50, that is when you have dark pink shading in a red line. Um, I think that is going to take, you see, when that happens, you go pretty decently below the 30-day moving average. That's going to be your 38% retracement in that area. That's what you'll be looking for there. So um, that's kind of like my, that's not my worst case. That, that would be my worst case scenario. That's my, that is my more likely scenario for that to occur. That's the kind of pullback I expect to see during, because that's about a 5% pullback now. As you saw seasonality, we don't always get 5% drops, um, but that would be a, five, a roughly 4.5% pullback. Market's going to go crazy because there's going to be, like the market never pulls back, intermediate pullback without a reason to. So there'll be a reason. There'll be a catalyst for the selling, for the increase in volatility. I mean, you'll start, again, you also don't get um, intermediate pullbacks here on this chart. You also don't get intermediate pullbacks. So there's an intermediate pullback without 1% declines. Right, you'll get one percent, even a two percent. Or on this pullback, you got a three percent pullback uh, after some one percent. You know, so lots of pullbacks here. And then on this intermediate climb, you got a couple one percent pullbacks. So we haven't had a one percent pullback since that little one percent dip there in between these two rallies. So this one still big. This is one big intermediate run. That's the only one percent pullback. So when we pulled back, if and when we pull back, and we will at some point. Um, it will be with multiple 1% drops, which, and those don't just happen with no news, right? The market just doesn't wake up and say, okay, let's, let's take profits and sell. No, there'll be a reason to. And, you know, you'll, on TV, they'll talk about, is this the beginning of a bear market? And are we going to go into recession? And it's like, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, it's just the intermediate, the intermediate line is going to drop below 50 and that's it. And then we'll find support. Um, and those, that little area support, this the 38% line members in this little congestion area right there. Well, if you go to the Bollinger Bands, um, that little congestion area, it's above the value area uh, of the uh, volume on SPY. And there's a pretty good volume note of support in that area too. And obviously it would get bigger as we pull back down into that spot. Uh, and the other thing too is if you look at the Ichimoku cloud, whoops, the Ichimoku cloud here. If we did fall back down into this congestion area, you notice we would be flirting with the cloud. We'd probably come down, um, we'd probably flirt with the bottom end of the cloud, which can act as support on the intermediate pullbacks, the bottom end of these clouds, a little bit below it. But you'll, I mean, you're typically gonna go through the cloud. And again, so it's like, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. You're on a very strong trend as it is on a daily chart, uh, and we have been for a while. You're starting a weekly chart. So if we get an intermediate pullback, which some of these, you know, like this one was, and this one was here, um, you know, you notice it doesn't alter the fact that you're on a very strong trend. So it, it looks more parabolic than it is right now, but you always have to remember the, to, to look at the log scale. Obviously, we're not nearly as parabolic now as even we were over here, um, but at the end. So we're just kind of getting going on a very, very good, strong, bullish trend. So if, if and when we get a couple of weeks, and if you look at the uh, Hakanyashi candles now, Actually, before we look at the Hakinashi candles, uh, a reminder to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over our logo right here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit that red subscribe button that pops out. Hit the thumbs up icon down below the video. That tells us two things. Number one, you liked the video. Number two, you want us to do it again Monday. Quick, easy way to give us feedback. You can do that right now while you're watching. Also, comment down there. What did you get out of the video today? We always like to hear, and you can be able to share with other people uh, that are coming for the first time, because we always get first-time listeners. We always get quite a few first-time listeners. But let them know uh, when, as they're coming what they should watch, why they should watch, and what, they should, what they'll get out of it, uh, with what you got out of it. So... Uh, also, join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a link popping out up there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe. Uh, it's a, f a free subscription. Uh, we obviously have uh, uh, pay plans as well for monthly subscribers as well as our premium subscribers with different content uh, for each one. But uh, you can subscribe there. To that link will take you there for free. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content in between these videos from day to day. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created. But of course, if you're watching this on our site, uh, you can watch the blog here. We ask you, we invite you to engage with us on social media. Hit this little heart; it opens up this window where you can like today's Market Outlook tweet. There, hit that thumbs up; uh, it opens up the Market Outlook Facebook post, and you can like uh, today's Market Outlook Facebook post and share it with others. Again, you have access to all of our classes here on our calendar. Here's our upcoming classes for next week. Uh, Brandon's very popular 
both of these, or all of these are very popular, but there's this dividend growth investing, so make sure you check that out. All of our classes, all of our trading rooms are available for our plus and our premium subscribers. So whether you have monthly access or you get premium for multiple years with all of our custom content as well, either way you get access to our trading rooms. So there's a link there that will take you to more details for that. All right, now let's go back and look at the Hakanyashi candles here. <clears throat> and you'll see um, a little bit of a long upper shadow forming on the Hakanyashi candle, which means that the average price is, has been falling even after getting a high up here. The average price has been falling. And remember, Hakan uh, upper shadows on Hakanyashis can be just as bearish as upper shadows on regular candles, probably even more bearish. Um, so keep that in mind in terms of a potential transition candle, um, you know, that we might roll straight right over to a bearish candle. Uh, something like this actually um, we didn't get as much of a long upper shadow here but we can go straight over without the transition candle that you see in some of these other uh, turnovers where you get the uh, that start these intermediate pullbacks where you get the um, up and down shadows also watch for that red arrow if, if and when we do drop below that 50-day uh, moving average there so uh, there's the Dow Jones the even bigger upper shadow there there's your Nasdaq look at that long upper shadow and then the Russell 2000 is already giving you transition candles. So it kind of shows you how much in transition we may be already in between um, this bullish trend we've been on, this bullish intermediate run we've been on for multiple months, and potentially the beginnings of this intermediate uh, pullback. Um, you have to have a catalyst for the pullback. So without a catalyst, you just keep grinding uh, up and down, but you keep grinding. So you generally have to have some reason for the, for the media to make up um, to say, okay, this is the reason why, but the reality is it's, you, you, can't, you can't breathe unless you inhale and you exhale. So the markets can't go up unless it goes up and it goes down, uh, forms higher highs and higher lows. Uh, let's take a look at the three green arrow chart. <clears throat> and you see we're getting, you know, when you're getting lots of arrows in the MACD, that's usually a sign uh, that we're getting closer to the end of the run. Um, but also remember that um, it might still be a week, you know, it might still be a week of kind of some consolidation because we got to, We've got to get a convergence uh, down lower here on the MACD, and we also have to uh, start th uh, flirting and threatening that 17-day moving average, and we're still easily above the 8. So I'm not looking for, like, big-time drops here next week. Um, but, you know, probably start going up less and start grinding more with maybe a little bias to the downside as we head towards uh, January expiration. And then, then the seasonality finally takes us lower. All right, now if you look at the intraday uh, charts here, so let's go to uh, the intraday chart. There's our pullback. So see, we kind of we're starting to fill in that gap that we never did fill in fill in here on Thursday when we gapped up to the upside. We're filling in that gap. You can see we've got some room to come down. We'll probably come down towards on this kind of next near term pullback. Probably come down towards 323. So then it's a matter of okay, how choppy we're going to be, um, because if you recall again, uh, going to the daily chart. Um, you know, that, 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 that 23% retracement level, if I were to go over here, uh, the 23, remember that best case scenario is right, uh, after the consolidation, you got this good move, you got a little sideways action before you got the clusters. Well, if you go back to, um, the daily chart, so let's go here and then go to a daily chart. So there's that, there's that consolidation right there. So we got the breakout little consolidation and then a breakout here again so it's kind of in this little area the bottom of that little vol volume nodes so we're looking right around 320 ish so now I go back to this um, that's that's right down in here so your 23 percent retracement is going to be down to that node uh, kind of flirting with this node this this volume area. remember in the next two days all this volume is going to come off so this is going to be the bottom of the value area and the low is really going to jump up. And, you know, next week the low is going to jump up to in this area and be there for a while. So we're really tightening up the range. We're down to only 13 points right now. And, you know, after a few days, we're going to be right here at 319.50. So, I mean, that's only going to be about eight points. So kind of a sign again that you're, you know, if you flirt, if you hit the bottom end of that four-week range, which will be that 320 area, and you bounce off of that, that's your 23% retracement. If you break through that, we start forming new four-week lows, then there's your 38% retracement. It would seem bad, but the reality is we're just pulling back further towards that congestion area um, on the 38% level. Let's look at today's volume and trading range uh, right here. 
and SPY, you can see the volume at 53 million, a little bit below average. The trading rate range was a little bit above average, but keep in mind, um, here we go. Um, those numbers are really low, so the average is still really low. The volume is 53 million was like down here, so so we're still really low. We're still easily below one percent. Once you start getting uh, ranges on a daily basis above one percent, because remember you get the one percent pullback, so you can't have an intermediate pullback without a one percent pullback. So once you start getting ranges that are above one percent, um, so which would be 3.25, right? Because we're at 325.71. So you have to get into this three to four. That's where the ranges. That's the bearish ranges. Once we start getting more ranges like that with volume probably in around the hundred million mark then we're we're on our intermediate pullback at that point and and generally that what will happen with the vix is it will pop and it will pop up here to around that at least one percent if not up to 105 right you get to 115 and we're getting a market sentiment pullback um, but you'll get a pop on the volatility start working its way up towards the top end of that area there all right so to summarize the trend still bullish little inklings continuing signs of weakness we're going to get an intermediate pullback at some point in time uh, we should have already been in the process of reducing our bullish risk and our active trading because it's the type of market we're in. Uh, if you've been following like our class trades and our class portfolios, we've been adding a lot more uh, bearish uh, delta, bearish small bearish delta trades. So we're still obviously heavily bullish delta, but not nearly as bullish as we were a month or two ago. We've been really dialing back the risk while still maintaining a mostly a predominantly bullish posture because that's the uh, portfolio because that's what the posture is. Um, so that's how you that's how you take this. So if the, if we do get the intermediate pullback right now in our class trades, we won't be affected too badly because we've got some bearish trades to help that will make some money uh, while some of the bullish trades and some of our bullish trades are less aggressive uh, as they were now. So they've got some flexibility uh, to work with. So that's you you see me and how we've been trading and and you get a glimpse here on the market outlook with our trade ideas of you know the the ideas to give you a glimpse of that. Obviously, we do a lot more in our classes. Um, but you've seen me and how I've been responding. So as bullish as I am, and, and the signs of weakness just make me uh, uh, pull back on the risk a little bit. And at some point in time, maybe you know within a week or two, we'll start this intermediate pullback. And, and, um, and then we'll just look for that support to develop there, the low point to develop. And away we go again to a new, new intermediate run and potentially new higher highs from there. So what do you think? Do you agree with that technical assessment? Do you disagree? There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. It opens up a poll. Then hit either agree or disagree. If you click disagree, comment down below on why. What are you seeing that either makes you a lot more bullish than I am or makes you a lot more bearish than I am? All right, now let's talk about um, this. Let's talk about the, what's driving the price action. And let's just take a look at the asset class performance for just this week alone. Um, so we'll go here to the 6th to start, and then we'll go through the 11th to finish the 10th, um, and then we'll hit uh, the 10-minute chart. So you can see stocks were up on the week, but so was gold and so was the dollar, interestingly enough. Uh, Long-term bonds were down for most of the week. They kind of rallied here and, and a little bit of risk off at the end of the week. And you can see crude oil was down the most. So uh, after all these tensions, and because the gold started the week strong with the tensions, and crude oil was kind of down. But once the uh, kind of up, but uh, kind of holding. But once the tensions kind of came off the table in terms of we're not going to go to World War III, then crude oil dropped, and gold's kind of dropped. It, it rallied here with the dollar falling, and then equities really rallied, especially emerging market equities. You can see small caps lagged. Um, in fact, they were down this week. Uh, and then foreign market, developed markets lagged behind emerging markets. So uh, it was kind of a risk off week uh, from that standpoint. Again, when you look at like um, how these foreign markets are doing, remember how there's, there was a time where a lot of these big foreign markets and their, mate, and their ETFs that track their, a lot of their stocks, they were all dark green shading and, and green lines. Well, for a lot of them, that's still the case. Japan's gone sideways. Uh, UK is falling and Brazil is falling to, to their moving averages. Everything out, they're all green lines. We're all above green lines. We're all bouncing and rising. A little Italy giving us a little bit of a cluster and um, uh, engulfing pattern and, and Germany getting a little weakness as well. So, you know, so I mean, this still we're, we're still bullish. We're still strong. And it's not just the US, which was the case before. It's now it's all across the board. We're pretty strongly bullish here. So that's a very, very... Uh, good sign 
uh, for risk appetite and and um, and we're not like you know we're not impen we're not we don't we're not falling off a cliff uh, as you see with the asset I mean we were there was a there was a potentially a catalyst this week that could have caused more of that intermediate pullback and and it turned out to be not very much of a catalyst and you saw the reaction both before and after and so that's you know that's if you look at gold prices and you see how you know they were impacted um, by this news uh, you see they rallied and then they've pulled back and now uh, now you've got this long upper shadow which can be very bearish uh, long upper shadow so and you've got a weak you know you got light pink shading we're not anywhere close to a yellow line we're not anywhere close to dark pink shading and a red line so you know it's been bullish You've got the cluster there uh, coming off of a low point. You've got the cluster to kind of solidify the beginnings of an intermediate run despite this little weakness here. So I still expect gold to be bullish, which means that I actually expect the dollar, and we had a pretty good discussion today in the Q&A session on the dollar. I actually expect this little bullishness on the dollar, which has produced a bearish pattern of light green shading and a yellow line, to roll back over and head to the downside, uh, which would be bullish for equities and obviously bullish for gold at the same time. Uh, if you take a look at crude oil prices, which has been kind of trying to figure out its own little bullish rally, well, it pulled back, and I think that pullback is temporary too. Uh, again, just knee-jerk reaction to what happened uh, in, over the week, and now we're getting light pink shading in the yellow line, and we expect I expect that that will uh, bounce back up and continue to uh, move to the upside. So, so with all that being said, um, you know, that's the, that's the rally. I mean, that would be bullish uh, for equities, for crude oil to continue to rally. Um, you know, it would be bullish for equities for the dollar to fall, which would be the, you know, crude oil rising. Uh, if yields were to continue to move higher, you know, that would be bullish for equities. We've had a little pullback the last couple of days in this little risk off mode. You know, just kind of keep an eye on these yields. I, you know, there's some resistance here in this Fibonacci retracement zone that you see at the 23% level. Um, the next layer of resistance will be up at 2.1%, which I think we'll eventually get to. Um, but we're kind of consolidating and grinding in a sideways action. Like, we're not going up or down here. In fact, if you look at the, uh, the Ichimoku cloud uh, for the 10-year yield, you can see a lot of noise, a lot of noise over the past few months. Some brief spurts of bullishness. So we've had some bullish trends. But then you look at the weekly chart, and you know the reason why we're not really going anywhere because we were on a very strong bearish trend and now we're kind of grinding at that 23 percent uh, retracement level so this is not going to be easy for it to get going to the upside so that's why i think you know until i think over the next few weeks there could be some consolidation um even if crude oil bounces there could be some consolidation in this area uh, as we get closer to the cloud before we start moving through such a big cloud there and working our way back above 2% into the Fibonacci retracement zone, which is this zone. Obviously, that would happen with a bullish market. But right now, we're not in the bullish trend. We're in a very bare, we're in a noisy. We've been in the very strongly bullish trend, which we're not in anymore. Uh, so I don't expect new lows, but I do expect some grinding and some up and down noisy choppy uh, before we do kind of break out and get going uh, to the upside. All right, let's take a look now at the sectors and how they've been performing uh, this week. Uh, let's zoom in here on the sector comparison chart, and then we'll change our time frame to just this week right here. All right, we'll go 10 minutes. All right, well, you can see um, as, 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 you know, as, as crazy as things were early in the week, uh, and you can see communication services start out the week strong regardless, and so did technology. Well, by the time stocks rally, they continue to rally, and so does healthcare. And those healthcare and technology have been very strong lately. But you can see industrials and financials kind of lag, and they have been relatively strong. Industri uh, materials and energy also lagging behind, which is not a bad thing considering that they're lagging sectors. So once they start to outperform, that means we're getting towards the end of a long-term run. Uh, you can also see uh, safety uh, safety, safe haven areas, materials or utilities, staples, they were lagging to begin the week and they continue to lag after the week. So not as risk off as a week at, um, and so not pretty much a lot of hullabaloo in terms of a market standpoint about nothing. Obviously not, not about nothing in terms of a political standpoint or geopolitical standpoint, but in terms of the market response to it, the market's not looking at it as a catalyst for increased volatility which is what we are watching for to see what out of any news whatever you know as out there how does that you know how does that cause 
any kind of market volatility. Uh, and, if, and as you can see, within a couple of days, that was all gone and energy stocks followed uh, crude oil down, which is not surprising. Uh, and then our you know, good cyclical areas continue to really outperform, which is a very good sign because they, they haven't been the outperformers to begin. The technology has, but not communication services and not discretionary. They haven't been outperformers since the October 8th low. And the more that discretionary pops up too, and those two continue to, to outperform, the better we are for the, you know, the ongoing um, bullish trend that we want to see. All right, so for our trade idea of the day, um, a stock that's been kind of down, beaten down is kind of a common theme here, a stock that's been kind of beaten down, but it's looking to break out and get going here. Look at this strong bullish posture and, and a little bit of a breakout above this old near-term high point to a higher near-term high coming off of a uh, roughly equal near-term low point. Um, a good bullish market forecast pattern there. When you look at the three green arrows for the stock, you can see we're getting three green arrows as well. And uh, some pretty decent volume too relative to uh, the averages uh, down at the bottom. Look at the long-term uh, view for Cree and you see that um, you know, we've been bearish, we've been in the death cross environment, we're getting this, um, you know, we're flirting with that 50 day moving average, which is now rising again, the PPO looks like it's starting to rise, we got this transition candle uh, that could transition us into a bullish trend, uh, look at the uh, DMI, and you see that the positive directional index has gotten above 25, the negative, which has been above 25 for so long during this bearish run, is now uh, flirting with dropping below 20, well, that's the pattern you like to see here. Uh, obviously, the ADX is low, which means if we get that pattern, it could lead to a trend. It could lead to dark uh, shading eventually if we start to move, uh, if it starts to really get going. Uh, if you look at the uh, Bollinger Bands uh, for Cree, you see that it's just broken above a pretty this point of control. Uh, and above the upper Bollinger Band, and, and which is with a low bandwidth, which is also a very bullish signal. Um, so really, kind of a bullish breakout. Looks like it's trying to enter a gap of volume until you get back up into this 58 to 60 area. So, so we can look to say, okay, well, how about we look to buy uh, the, uh, in this case, buy out of the money uh, below the 40 delta, and then we'll offset the cost of that with the um, with selling this 55 option. You can see the 55 is easily within uh, the one standard deviation move, and also below that big volume note up there for resistance. You can see it over here, uh, we end up risking about, and you can see we're up a little bit since we got into it during the Market Outlook Live session at 3.30 Eastern. Uh, we risk you know, half of that 500 bucks to try to get about $1,500 of reward. So almost about a five to one, better than five to one reward to risk ratio on the trade. Very small risk, decent reward if it works out. So that you see the theme. I've been trading small, because it, partly because of the earnings, partly because of the market posture, that's mature. So we trade small, we spread out a risk across different trades, different stocks do different things. As you can see, Cree hasn't been participating in this bullish run, so now maybe it will. And if the market does pull back and this continues to make its move, then that will help offset um, any weakness I might have in my portfolio during that pullback. All right, that does it for today. As always, you've heard from me now, now I want to hear from you. Use that link up there in the top right corner of your screen. It opens up a... Um, uh, excuse me, click on that link. It takes you to our forums, not opens up a poll. It takes you to our forums, and you can open up any new thread there with any questions or comments you have about today's video. Reply to anybody else's thread. Um, again, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that thumbs up icon, and comment on our video down below. Follow me on Twitter for more content in between these videos, and join us at marketscholars.com, as I showed you earlier, for free, as well as uh, join our Facebook group. Um, our Market Outlook Facebook group. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody, and we'll see you all on Monday.